Second topic I wanted to cover with yeah. you was energy economics. Sure. One thing that struck me about the energy industry in particular is just how complex the interplay between market forces, mm -hmm. policy decisions, and uh, technology advancements can be. Mm -hmm. Given your experience as an energy economist, which would you say has a greater influence on the dynamics of the energy economy, macroeconomic conditions or geopolitical conditions? Well, geopolitical, from the standpoint of, of here we get into game theory and oligopoly and the power that OPEC say it had, you know, a dozen or so um, members that could control the price of oil. That is diminishing. You have, look at the United States as the largest energy exporter, LNG to Europe, you know, backing the Russian supplies that are, have been limited. Um, so that, those geopolitical forces created stagflation in the early 70s. The power, when, when OPEC discovered that it had, the power that it had, it wreaked havoc. And just to offer some right. context for those not familiar with OPEC. We'll, oh, sure. Organization yeah. of Petroleum Exporting Countries. So cool. this, again, is about a dozen countries, 13, that, uh, and they've expanded to include some smaller ones, that basically, uh, as an oligopoly, uh, they're not a monopoly like PG&E, where there's one, one franchised uh, uh, operator, um, control the price with a swing producer as Saudi Arabia that can kind of break free from that or instill some discipline. So they agree on the amount of output per country. Okay. okay, to maintain a certain price. And that, of course, now for, from their standpoint, they want to raise the price, but they want to raise it in such a way that it's not so high that it induces other countries to find alternative technologies. Mm. So case in point, when I started in 1986 in energy economics, they flooded the market, Saudi Arabia in 1986, and oil went to $9 per barrel, nominal, which meant all of the government funding for solar and wind and everything else was just like, and is that because they skids. want to not put certain countries in a position where the price of oil is too high, so they start investing in other technologies that's that right. can disrupt their that's power? That's right. And okay. so for them, it's kind of finding the sweet spot, right? It's mm -hmm. like, what's the highest price that it can be before they will say, ah, this is killing us. We've got to you know, seek other technologies. Now, inflation is very concerning. And why is that? Adolf Hitler, 1923, the rampant hyperinflation. And the, and the reasons are complex, but they're they're mostly tied to the fact that um, the reparations the Germans had to pay after World War I uh, put capital constraints on the growth of their economy. So it's kind of the supply and demand curve. You have demand increasing, but supply is not there. You had this hyperinflation, people carrying wheelbarrow uh, buckets of money that was becoming obsolete over time, mm -hmm. right? That gives you a Hitler. <clears throat> that gives you Hitler more than any other macroeconomic factor, more than foreign exchange or unemployment or interest rates or anything else. Inflation is scary. Now, there's inflation and there's inflation, right? There, there's the kind of inflation that could be imposed by the producer of a commodity and that commodity being very crucial to an economy like gas or oil. Um, and then there's inflation due to supply chain constraints and COVID. Just every part, apart for a Tesla, a piece of plastic, anything, that's a hydrocarbon, but a piece of aluminum, you know, uh, could be constrained and therefore shoot the price up. And then companies could see all the other prices going up and say, ah, well, you know, I'm going to take advantage of this chaos and just double my prices, even if my cost structure didn't increase, right? Mm -hmm. So you have this kind of thing going on. And, and, you know, I think, you know, the Biden administration has inherited that mess. Um, and his critics never really came up with a plan B. The critics never said, okay, let's do X, Y, and Z. Let's haul these corporate leaders in front of Senate testimony to, uh, to ask really what their cost structure is. Because mm -hmm. the producer price index is not jumping by 10% than your Retail price should not jump by 10%. Yeah. So that's holding their feet to the fire. That's, that's you know. So they're the policies to diversify the portfolio of energy sources, right? It's like you buy a treasury bill. It's really safe, but it doesn't yield a lot. You buy a junk bond. It yields a lot, but it's not very safe. Yeah. So I want my portfolio of stocks and bonds to kind of average out to something. Sort of when you build up yeah. a portfolio, one of the biggest measures is like a beta, because you want to see what would be the, the that's sort right. of difference where I invest, invested in like the S&P versus like my own portfolio. Well, that's right. And, and, you know, every industry has its own CAPM, has its own kind of expected rate of return relative to a portfolio of other companies that are similar minded or, or, or similar in, in, yeah. in output. Now, to get back to energy, you know. California is blessed because we have wind, we have geothermal, you know, we have had a whole broad array of energy supply technologies that some states couldn't have. Some states were strictly coal or strictly a certain type of coal, uh, anthracite, uh, for example. Um, but the fact that we can do many broad things is a function of our geography and, the, and being blessed with this, this environment that we have that allows us to do different things. 
and some are more expensive. Look at Diablo, right? We just got an extension on the life of Diablo, which is a nuclear power plant. Uh, what's Two, Diablo? 2,400 megawatt nuclear power plant down down south oh, okay. near San Luis Obispo. Now, that's very old, right? It didn't even even expect it to be around this long. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people were opposed to it back in the 70s and 80s because of accidents. But we weren't thinking about climate change back then either. So now we're thinking, oh, this terrible, nasty thing. This should be buried in the ground in Nevada. We may need it because it's carbon free. And in retrospect, <laughs> were those concerns, sh- should we sort of think about them as being baseless in the sense of like, oh, it has the word nuclear in, in it. So people were scared of it. Or were there actually like concerns that were credible? Well, there, there were credible concerns. You know, one, uh, one of the things that happened uh, at the end of, of World War II in the early 50s, we built a, uh, a Westinghouse boiling water reactor that was, say, adopted in France. All mm-hmm. of the nuclear reactors are of a certain variety in France. This one design. Our view in the 106 reactors that we built was that we really should not cookie punch these same things because if they're flawed, we're screwed, right? If, if, they're all, if they all have an intrinsic failure, we're dead. Yeah. So we, we distribute and diversify to have all these different designs. Well, now we have the problem that it's, it's like 106 custom made Ferraris and they're kind of, they need to be tweaked here and there and they really have different extension lifetimes. And almost it's, like it's a mess. almost like if we had a bunch of different outlets and we'd all be struggling right. with like adapters and stuff. Right. And and then the government came in and said, okay, there's all these cost overruns. It's mm-hmm. exceeding inflation. This is even before OPEC, right? Uh, we're either going to nationalize this, like the Germans and the Canadians and everyone else, or the French, or you guys figure it out. And then they put together an organization that I worked with to do research and to pool research dollars to to solve some of these technical problems. Uh, Of course, we're blessed with having a state the size of France or Germany to to put the waste in Nevada, right? Other countries where I studied energy didn't have that luxury. They had to be smarter about energy, right? They have borders with countries they fought wars with. They're importing gas from Russia that has nuclear weapons and is a fascist state. That's terrifying. We are between two oceans, Canada and Mexico. We don't have to worry about these things, right? So we we have a certain luxury there. and then we rolled the dice and experimented with deregulation. The idea is that PG&E was not inflationary, but it was too expensive, that they, we could squeeze some blood out of the system by taking it apart and letting the free market take it over. Enron came in, bankrupted the state of California by exorbitant. This is all kind of before you guys were born. Mm-hmm. Um, and nearly bankrupted, bankrupted us in the name of the free market. So mm-hmm. now we're piecing it back together again. But the thing to remember is... is there are high fixed costs with energy. When you build a $7 billion power plant, it's got to be around a long time, and the public has to be willing to pay for it. We have high prices, people might say now, but we signed contracts 25 years ago with the technology at the time. If a solar contract today seems expensive, it's because of Moore's law, right? We signed it 25 years ago, and sure, solar cells got cheaper over time because of technology, but at that time, we had to sign those contracts. Yeah, It's like, Right, you sign a lease with your landlord and two thousand dollar a month rent, and you say, you know, I don't want to pay this anymore. I want to pay a thousand, you know, because it's inflationary, right? I can't afford it, and your landlord's going to kick you out. You know, Should- there there are these contracts and these obligations that you have, and in retrospect, in hindsight, twenty twenty, it always seems like, well, that's crazy expensive compared to today. Right? Yeah. Should the audience yeah. think about it as um, whenever a plant is created, there's yeah. sort of like this fixed increase in supply, but the problem yeah. is throughout time the demand is going to constantly increase and increase and increase with like the rate of innovation. And that's what sort of leads to constraints. Well, like, so in the energy. 1950s, you could, t- you could draw a picture right after world war two and America was dominating the, the, the world, you know, economically, you could draw a line. You could take two points, 51 and 52, 53 and 54, and draw a line and just predict load growth and mm-hmm. predict all the power plants you need because America was boom, 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 growing and growing and growing. And there wasn't really an incentive to lower energy. We weren't thinking about climate change. We weren't thinking about environmental damage the way we are now. Clean Air, Clean Water Act weren't even around, yeah. you know? And so it was go, go, go. And now what we're trying to do is trying to modulate demand. We're trying to say, hey, you know what? If you run your washing machine at two in the morning, right, we'll, we'll actually pay you to do that. We're trying to lower your demand during certain periods of the day when energy is cheaper. So. Two o'clock in the afternoon in July, turn on all the air conditioners. It's crazy expensive. We have to add and stack power plants to meet that demand. Yeah. The whole system is designed to meet this peak that is, that is a very short, per- small percentage of the total amount of time, 8,760 hours, that, that the need is there. Right? Yeah. So it's really a balancing. It's like an orchestra leader, right? It's like, okay, I want the tuba to be a little quieter here, and I want the, uh, the clarinet to be a little louder here. You're trying to 
turn off all these plants. There's thousands of plants in the CAISO system, the, the larger California system, and somebody has to minimize the cost while maintaining reliability and maintaining environmental safety. Mm. So it's an optimization problem. We studied that in class, yeah. some small optimization problems. But. Mm -hmm.